I grew up in the Boston neighborhood of Brighton and have lived there ever since I was born. Even though I did not grow up around a lot of green space, I still like to think that I'm connected to nature and seek it out in as many ways as I can. My childhood friends and I would go to parks, but the cement, streetlights, and busy roads were our nature. That's why I would consider myself a city person. The accessibility, diversity, and endless possibilities make Boston my home. Going to high school in Dorchester, I always explored the city. On my way to and from school, I went through downtown Boston, Back Bay, Alston, and many other Boston neighborhoods. Experiencing the city has exposed me to so many different people I never would have seen otherwise. A city kid to me is someone who can interact and relate to many types of people based on their exposure to different cultures, races, sexualities, and religions. Boston has taught me to be as accepting of others as possible, and that is because the city combines many different ethnic cultures in one. Although the city is divided, my high school gave me the opportunity to be around various types of people. Boston's nature is limited to small neighborhood parks, the common, and the public garden. Although the city is clamorous, places like the Madonna Shrine in East Boston can show you the entire cityscape and it makes the town seem very small, quiet, and peaceful. Here you can see the sun coming out after the storm and the beauty of Boston is coming to life. My connection to the natural world arose at my grandmother's house in Dover, Massachusetts. She lived in a secluded home at the end of a cul-de-sac. My brothers, cousins, and I were always outside playing, riding bikes, and meeting neighborhood kids. We would make games out of the trees, branches, and grass, and it became our own little world. Seeing the forest and exploring it made me feel connected to nature and my family. The openness in Dover led my cousins and I into some trouble. When I was about six years old, I ran across the frozen swamp in my Nana's backyard and I fell in. Thankfully, my cousin was right there to save me. Experiences in the outdoors like this made me realize how harsh the environment can be, but also how my family would always be there for me when I needed them. Similarly, my maternal grandmother would tell my brothers and I stories of her growing up on a farm. She grew up on the Canadian province of Prince Edward's Island, or PEI as the locals refer to it. She moved to Boston in her 20s to seek better employment, and when she saved up enough, she bought a beachfront house in the town of Stratford for her children to experience. Although I was petrified of water as a kid, my summers in PEI gave me the opportunity to roam the beach with my brothers in search of whatever treasures we may find. Trips there shaped my connection to water because at low tide, the sandbars offered a buffer between the shore and the deep ocean. The tranquility of the beach there gave me the ability to cope with my fear of water. Prior to my freshman year of high school, I had never flown in a plane. I signed up for a tour of Greece and Italy with the company Education First, and I was blown away by the difference in culture across the Atlantic Ocean. Europe exposed me to different beautiful artworks and cultures that were completely unique compared to Boston, Dover, or even PEI. Since then, I have visited the European cities of Athens, Barcelona, Dublin, Lisbon, Rome, and Florence. Here we have a picture of the city of Athens next to a photo of the mountain town of Delphi. I love an urban setting like Athens with many people, restaurants, and noise everywhere. However, in Delphi, I was able to see beautiful mountain ranges with little cell service allowing me to be one with nature. Although the countryside of Greece is beautiful, the cities always hold my attention. Lisbon, Portugal was my favorite to visit because of its beautiful street art, architecture, and beaches. Unlike Boston, Lisbon encourages graffiti, and the streets and alleyways are covered in it. I love to see unconventional art appreciated because it gives the everyday person a way to express themselves with recognition. With Boston University, I will study abroad in London in summer 2019. Although I love Europe and want to visit again, I have always dreamt of visiting every U.S. state and every continent on the planet. I want to familiarize myself with the country I was born in and see parts of it besides the Northeast. I also want to broaden my worldview by going to South America, Asia, Africa, and Australia. On our team trip to Walden Pond, I was able to understand Thoreau's essay firsthand. Thoreau said when he stepped out on his porch at Walden, he did not feel confined or crowded. At the pond, I felt the same way. I truly felt one with nature and was able to relax my mind and detach myself from outside stresses like my phone, social media, and school. One place I can truly relate to Thoreau's Walden is the pier in East Boston's Maverick Square. As a high schooler, my friends and I would take the train over to Eastie and sit at the dock which gave us an immaculate view of the Boston's downtown skyline. We would stay for the sunset, which made the city gleam with yellow, orange, and pink light. For me, that dock was like a sanctuary where I could talk to my friends about anything. We would stay for hours, even past our curfew, and try to make out the stars dimmed by light pollution. Sometimes we would jump in Boston Harbor and scramble back to 
the floating wooden platform. Here I found a place like my grandmother's house with my friends that I consider family. Thoreau's Walden was a place where he truly felt at peace. Similarly, I truly feel at peace and in control when I'm driving. When I am driving down the highway, blasting music, I feel truly in control of my situation. My life feels like a movie as I see the skyline in my rear view, and that's when I can actually be disconnected and free. In the summer of 2018, I got into a car accident and never thought I would drive again. After a couple of months, I eventually got behind the wheel and I felt nervous at first. But after some trips, I felt myself back in control. The ability to drive a car will always be a way in which I truly feel command over my body and the situation around me. Every day I try to increase my connection to nature. However, living in Boston, it makes it a bit difficult. I still find myself able to get out to the dock or drive around, but I have not been able to go to Dover or PEI since both my grandmothers have passed. Nevertheless, both of them told me to be true to myself, and I intend to do so by being in touch with the world around me. Thank you.